a small school of about 170, 75 kids uh, on a coastal strip of New South Wales at Brunswick Heads, a school with a fairly established staff, although having said that, we've got uh, two new teachers on staff this year. We have um, a, a fairly heavy involvement in the PWSA sports that are offered through primary schools. We make sure that our kids um, can nominate what knockouts that they want to go into. We train them up as a team for that. But we also make sure that if there's trials for any other sport, uh, sports that our kids don't play a lot of, then we make sure we send kids to those trials just so they get to experience it. And if they happen to be good enough, they've got that opportunity to play that sport at a higher level without necessarily having a school team or being involved in what's going on on the weekends. We'll do that for our athletics carnival, our cross country and our swimming. And we have two or three really good kids in each of those sports but not enough necessarily to make a whole school team so they can go on and represent our district or our zone, even our region at some times, right up to state level, which is a fantastic thing for kids to have opportunity to do. We break the year into 12 fundamental movement skills in year three to six. In kindergarten to year two, it's a little bit different because they focus on particular types at particular times. So, for instance, it might be overarm throw. And at the beginning of that week, we do the explicit teaching where we put the, um, the skill up on the whiteboard and they watch the students go through doing it correctly and incorrectly and be able to pick out what they're doing well and what they're not doing and over the key points that they're looking for. Then usually we'll go out and we'll just have lots of practice at using that skill. So we might have a variety of equipment set up and then they just rotate around just re-practicing. Then they usually do a little peer assessment so that they can check each other and see that they're doing the actual skill and, and be able to identify with their peers what they're doing really well and then they can point out something they need to develop and then for the next three weeks we're just reverting back to that and playing lots and lots of different activities and games that we get from our fundamental movement skills folder that will support the learning of that skill and then because it also links in with our sports program then they can be practicing that when they play their sport. I like to get better at sport it's fun and you learn heaps of skills like teamwork and sometimes even independent skills and hand and eye coordination. For K-2 is um, our three classes come together and we basically work on um, rotating groups so um, at the moment we're fo focusing on fundamental movement and this week we're focusing on rotation so this week we'll be coming together, we'll do a warm-up activity all together as a group and then um, each of our three groups will move off with the teacher and we have about a 10 minute rotation, then they move on. So each three activities are actually supporting development for um, that particular fundamental movement. Um, what we do is depending on the activity that we're focusing on, we might tailor it to the different groups. We do actually have our kinders grouped together, our ones and twos, but um, we find there's mixed ability in those anyway. In For some particular movements, we um, might have a different activity altogether for our year two groups. We'll have one um, person focusing on um, rotating and moving um, in terms of rolling and that sort of thing with mats. We'll have um, one person using equipment and rotating equipment, so the action required for that. And um, the third activity will be rotating on a pivot. The Premier Sport Challenge it usually starts when we're doing cross-country training, so predominantly we're encouraging kids to do their activity at home and um, we tally it each day at school and so we obviously we tally their lunch time and that but we don't actually do any extra activity in school at that time we just it's all about advertising and trying to get them to increase their activity levels at home but because it is cross-country term they're getting a fair bit to yeah. log on to their um, little booklets while they're at school we found teachers were okay about wanting to do PE but they weren't comfortable with what to do when they went out to do the skills. So we got all the resources that we have in the school and we scanned them all and then we took the resources that were online and we broke them down into the and pulled them apart and broke them down into the 12 fundamental movement skills. So that way all the teacher has to do is go, okay, I'm doing overarm throw, pick up the the folder of overarm throw activities and it's got the get skilled resources and a few different things in it. We get a lot of resources through things like um funding Live Life Well and we also um, get a lot of programs coming sponsored kind of sports that um, like the Hot Shots Tennis that sort of thing. Um, we do do fundraising through our PNC. We have a fairly small playground so that means that there's a lot of competition for space. We can't get all our kids doing sport 
within our school for school sport. So we're having to use a lot of community facilities. We use the beach, we use local parks. Um, we bus kids out to sport um, two, two of the terms across the year. So that's challenging. You know, I can't, for my boys' softball team, for instance, they can't bat during school hours because it's just too dangerous. One, they hit it into the caravan park and secondly, they can hit other kids. So that's probably our biggest challenge. Um, also, the kids not having access to sport on the weekends because... Um, if you play a weekend sport, it tends to be really spread out, so you're going to different different towns every weekend, and, and that's too big a commitment and too both monetary and time-wise for the families in our community. So you're trying to encourage kids to play sport when they've had no experience of what it's like outside of school. So they, their attention span for sport is quite small. So you have to start with 20-minute games, modified games, before you can even look at getting whole sports in. In our classrooms, we have lots of short little breaks where we incorporate YouTube clips of movement. We do them at all kinds of the day um, before we get started for our literacy sessions when we're coming in from breaks as well. When I go outside and have um, be active, I'm always hyped up and I'm ready to play around. And then when I come back, I'm always settled and and I can work easier. Our lesson breaks is an idea I got from the other year five and six teachers. I watch him bring his class out each morning for about 10 minutes. So I've tried it this year and it's working really well. And what we do is we have like a warm up game that only takes 10 minutes and the kids know that if they get a lesson break, they have to be out of the classroom the 10 minutes run around and back in in 10 minutes and it works well because they get really get used to that time frame we teach them a game on monday and it's usually one they know anyway so it might just be a quick tag game it might be you know knocking cones over and picking them up it's just something that's really it's got a point to it but it's quick and easy and then we do the same game all through that week so you don't have to do any explanation about rules or anything it's just right let's go out do the game in and it's working really well we don't do it every day just when they need they're getting a bit unsettled or they've worked really well and they they're ahead of time and it just breaks that two-hour literacy session into to two parts and it's been really successful with the kids they're enjoying it. You get to make make new friends and uh, you like get to know a bit more about your friends and being active makes you healthy. Obviously it's health and fitness is a major one but also self-esteem like I look at um, some of the girls for instance some of the sports that they're playing and enjoying that they didn't think they'd ever be able to do and when they go to high school they, they always come back and say oh Mrs Curry we're the best throwers out of any other school and they may or may not be I don't necessarily think that they are but they feel that they can achieve at, at sport and I think that'll encourage them as adults to join sport whereas if they if they lack those skills and we don't teach them in primary school sport isn't going to be as much fun in high school so you start to, to get an image that it's not a fun thing to do which lifetime lifelong wise is going to have a fairly big impact on what they do to keep themselves healthy and what what um, habits they pass on to their kids